Okay, I think we are uh, ready to start it. We've got a full house, so we'll, we'll get going. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. My name is Greg Barrett. I'm one of the partners at Finit. We've got a pretty neat uh, webinar for, for everyone today. I think, there's, I think there's two audiences that will get a lot of value out of this. Uh, first, would, first would be those that are still have Hyperion Enterprise. Uh, you know, maybe you have like you're keeping a copy of it for tax or historical purposes, um, but also folks that have any kind of historical uh, application. Uh, we're going to focus on Hyperion Enterprise and HFM uh, today, but you could apply this uh, in a lot of different ways. So, um, what we're going to be going over is what what I call the uh, a flat app or uh, an archive application. So we, we came up with this solution uh, probably about four or five years ago. I think it, uh, at one of our clients, Yum Brands, we had helped them go from uh, Hyperion Enterprise to HFM. And if you think about it, that's a, that can potentially be a lot of historical data to be moved across. Many, most companies, you know, three to five years is pretty standard in terms of uh, the amount of historical data we, we tie out and bring across. Uh, so sometimes there's historical data beyond that, you know, 10 years of historical data that uh, is sitting out there that doesn't get brought into the new uh, HFM or one stream application. So what we, what we did is we said, well, IT is saying you've got to get rid of the server that houses uh, Hyperion Enterprise. We don't want to spend a whole bunch of money and do a, a large project to, to move all this Hyperion Enterprise data. We came up with what we call the flat or archive app. And I call it the flat app because the, the first instance, instance we did was very simple. We, we basically just took the account and entity dimensions of Hyperion Enterprise and slammed them into a uh, HFM application. Uh, so it was, we're just using HFM as sort of a repository. There were no rules, no reports no structures put in place. It was just a, a very simple way to move the data into HFM, something all the users were familiar with, so they could access that historical data in a, in a separate app if needed. IT could then retire the old servers, and Hyperion Enterprise could fully go away. Uh, so depending on the size of, of your Hyperion Enterprise app, we can do that in one to two weeks. Um, and then over the course of, of the next few years, as we were uh, doing this for more and more clients, we saw uh, that some of them wanted a couple, you know, additions. There might be like, we want to see the, we want to see the full entity hierarchy. So we want, want to see all the parent and child relationships. Or we want to build a few custom reports that uh, a user can come in and run that take, uh, take them directly to the data that they're most likely to, uh, to want to see. So um, Tim's going to walk through that. Uh, and go into the details of all that, um, but it should be very, a uh, very interesting solution we've, uh, we've got to uh, show you. So uh, I'm going to run through the uh, intro real quick. Uh, so finit has been around since 2002. We're privately owned, debt-free. Um, we, when you work with us, you work with Finit employees, not subcontractors. Our model is based on client satisfaction, so our consulting teams get bonus based on the feedback from our clients. And uh, that's how they get their bonus, uh, not on uh, hours charged. So that leads us to be uh, uh, aligned to our, our clients. It's been our, our model since our inception. And it's worked well. It allows us to make this statement. Uh, we've never failed a project. Uh, 250 plus clients. We're closing in on 300 and uh, 800 plus projects. Um, soon to be uh, 1,000 uh, projects. Uh, so pretty exciting. Uh, just to give you an idea, some of our clients over the years, I mentioned Yum Brands, I think was the, the first one where we did this. Uh, we've some of the others on here like uh, Masco and uh, Coke and Cardinal Health, Fruit of the Loom. Um, just some of the ones where we've, we've done flat or, uh, or hybrid uh, applications. So, uh, like I mentioned, Tim, Tim Head has done, uh, been involved in more of the flat archive uh, application projects than anyone in our company. So we've got the, uh, the right person for us today to, to go through this. And Tim's going to walk through some of the design decisions and, uh, and options around the flat uh, archive app. 
Uh, last thing I'll say is we're going to focus on going enterprise to HFM, but again, this could apply to anything, enterprise to, uh, to one stream, uh, it could apply to Hyperion planning, anything that you want to archive, you could apply some of the principles we're going we're gonna to go over, but the focus and the examples Tim will give will be enterprise to HFM, just to make things simple for today. So, okay, uh, with that, Tim, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks for the introduction, Greg. Um, we're going to be talking about enterprise archive applications, and just want to give you a quick overview of what we'll be talking about. I want to do first an overview of enterprise and the, just the idea of an archive application, then get into some of the design considerations that uh, if, if you're interested in doing an archive application, some of the questions we would ask you, uh, some of the options uh, in terms, especially the account and entity dimensions, uh, but also some other, other dimensions as well, and then get into how we are going to get data into and out of the archive application in terms of extracting and loading the data, getting it validated, and converting some reports. And then, as Greg mentioned, there are a number of variations on this theme of archive applications that, that we've done and others that are possible. Uh, so I, uh, we're looking forward to sharing this with you. I want to start, though, by making an important introduction. Uh, this is a, an impressive software product called Hyperion Enterprise. Um, I have highlighted in the lower left-hand corner of this image uh, a, a section that says copyright 1991 to 2011. And I, I would just want to highlight that because that is, to me, a 20-year lifespan for software product is pretty amazing. Um, and it's a testament to the significance that Hyperion Enterprise had in the market uh, you know, sort of an industry-defining product in terms of, uh, you know, corporate consolidations and financial reporting. And a, uh, the, f the fact that 2011 was its final release uh, was sad to a lot of people, um, but uh, there are still actually, in toward the end of the 2000s, Oracle reported that there were 2,500 companies still on enterprise. By 2016, there were just 650 companies they estimated still on enterprise. However, that's pretty amazing to me that there are 650 companies still using enterprise uh, five years after the last release and uh, three years after support from Oracle uh, ended. So over the last decade, most of the companies that we work with have migrated, they've upgraded from enterprise to HFM or OneStream. There are still some on enterprise that we, as clients that we work with, uh, but for the most part, uh, the, the, one of the big drivers is the additional features and functionality and flexibility that you get with newer consolidation systems, but the, the absence of support and updates for the product has also been a driving, a driving factor. Uh, you are, uh, potentially, if you're listening to this webinar, you're interested in this, um, my guess is that you actually migrated from enterprise some time ago. Uh, so if I paint a scenario, uh, you may have gone through a process two or three or four years ago to convert from enterprise to HFM or to OneStream, and that was a uh, maybe a difficult uh, process. It involved design sessions and working through what, uh, what you wanted for your company going forward what your chart of accounts would look like, what your entity structure would look like, to how to meet the needs of all your different uh, consum data consumers. And as part of that process, you also went through multiple years of historical data tie-out, loading and tie-out. And you know, Greg mentioned three to five years is typical and worked with clients who've done six or seven years of historical data that uh, was brought in from enterprise into HFM or into OneStream and tied out at a very detailed level. And there was a lot of work that went into that. And the great thing was then you were able to say goodbye to enterprise and leave it behind. Um, except in our experience, sometimes that isn't the case. And you as a financial systems administrator can't seem to get rid of enterprise. 
it keeps you keep carrying it around with you and in our experience there's a couple reasons why that's the case Greg mentioned one is that the need for some of that really historical data so you may have uh, loaded and tied out historical data going back to 2008 but every once in a while you get that request from the CFO or from your uh, tax department for data from 2004 and the only place that that data exists is an enterprise. It's, uh, you know, there, it's not in and it wasn't part of the scope of your enterprise conversion. Additionally, uh, one of the great things about enterprise was the ability to you know, spin off a category and uh, do a, a what if analysis or to set up alternate views, alternate organizational structures to look at uh, different ways of rolling up your data. When you went through the process of converting to HFM, you decided amongst those what, what were the important ones, what, what was essential to keep, and what uh, could be left behind. But you may have come to realize that there's some of that data, some of those alternate views of data in enterprise that you still need. Uh, and so, We've, we have talked to a number of clients who are in this kind of a position, worked with them, and I would describe it as sort of being between three different hard things. One is you've, you've realized that you have to keep this enterprise data around and accessible. You, you don't have the option of just getting rid of it and saying we don't have it anymore. At the same time, you are working, enterprises running on servers that IT is telling you are insecure and you know, haven't been patched and you tried patching them and it broke enterprise. You have to utilize Citrix to get access to them and it's a headache and a pain for IT. And so they've given you just a few months before they're going to pull the plug on the server. So you've got to do something. At the same time, you've it's been several years since you anybody in your company besides you and maybe one or other one or two other people used enterprise and sort of got a key man risk in terms of your dependency on some, some individuals who uh, know enterprise. And you very well may not know enterprise well yourself because you inherited an enterprise application. So in talking with clients, you know, we've, we've sort of uh, had them describe themselves as kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And that's where this idea for an enterprise archive application came from. And sort of the basics of an archive application, uh, we're going to use HFM or OneStream or, or another system for that matter, as Greg mentioned, as a repository for your enterprise data. And what that will enable us to do is to retain all the historical data from enterprise that you need and to get the different views, the different organizational structures from enterprise, retaining the enterprise chart of accounts, the, the enterprise entity naming conventions and uh, the different aggregations that you have. This isn't a enterprise conversion process like what you may have gone through a few years ago. This is much more of a lift and shift of enterprise into HFM or OneStream. It's a pretty straightforward build process and the data integration is pretty straightforward as well. It's, this is not a, a conversion process. This is just a lift and shift. And important to this, to the idea here is that to make this the, the most, uh, the quickest and most effective is to avoid recalculating, retranslating, or reconsolidating data. We, we want to actually leverage the work that Enterprise has done for you already. This data is years old and it was calculated and translated and consolidated and you're confident that it's accurate. So you just want the data, you don't want to recreate all that logic. So we're going to, with this approach, we're going to extract the data from enterprise, uh, both input and calculated accounts. We're going to extract local currency and translated data. We're going to extract base and parent entities and eliminations, everything is going to come out of enterprise and go directly into the application and we don't need to recreate any logic. We do that by utilizing, as Greg said, a, a flat dimensional structure in HFM or OneStream for the account and the entity dimension. So if you can, you can visualize, this, visualize this if you think about the intercompany dimension in HFM. 
it's a, it's a bunch of entities and it's just a flat listing of entities. There's not a hierarchy to it. And that's similar to how sort of the, the, the basic uh, enterprise archive application is structured. So we, we capture all the input and the calculated data. We load all that to base and parent entities, but all of that data is at a base level in terms of the dimensionality. So if, if this is something that you are wanting to explore, then uh, we, we want to have some conversations with you just to understand uh, your situation and think through what, sort of the, a good design based on your needs. So we start by asking a few questions.